Hello and welcome to another Ghost Stefana review. GTA is a hugely successful series for Rockstar Games and it kind of goes without saying that you should play each and every single title. But in this video, we're specifically talking about today in 2021 at the time of recording. This is GTA 5. Should I still buy it? The story. If you've watched any of my previous reviews, you'll likely know that I'm a big fan of Rockstar Games. I think they are master storytellers and beautifully blend humor into often very emotive narratives. GTA normally follows a similar suit in terms of its story. That is simply following a criminal as they try and make a living or pay off some even worse criminals that they have pissed off. In GTA 5, Rockstar introduced a new mechanic of having three controllable characters. They are Michael, an unhappily married family man living a wealthy but depressing life. I'm paying that turd 150 bucks an hour to fuck my wife. Franklin, a street hustler who has grown tired of gang warfare and wants to step up. Damn, man. I gotta spend my day with another middle-aged fool trying to recapture his youth. And Trevor, a psychopathic trailer-living man whose true motivations... Well, I'm still not sure. You can jerk me off if I get bored. I'm joking. You can suck me off. The game allows you the opportunity to switch characters at any point in the game. This element of the game is nice as it showcases three individuals, all of which with different backstories and motivations. This made the narrative feel more complex and interesting. Along the way, you pull off a series of heists and piss off a collection of angry dudes. Ultimately though, for me, it didn't quite cut through like previous GTA games. GTA 4 often divides opinion, but personally, I loved that story. It was deep, gritty, and had me genuinely invested in the protagonist. GTA 5, however, although fun and engaging, didn't shock me or invest me enough to really care about the outcome. However, the story is very fast paced, meaning it holds your interest and you'll rarely find yourself bored. Normally in my reviews, I focus solely on the single player element, but as the GTA Online experience is so impressive, that in itself could be a reason to pick up this game today. It's packed full of content, which to this day still remains regularly updated and the servers are still packed, albeit often with sweaty 13 year olds who try to ruin your gaming experience. But if you can see past that, there's plenty of reward by playing online, and the online story is actually nicely rounded and allows you the ability to still roleplay somewhat, even in an online world. The story was okay, not bad, but by Rockstar's own very high standards, not a standout for me. 7. Setting The game returns to the fictional state of San Andreas, this time in the city of Los Santos, which, despite fictional, is clearly heavily based on Los Angeles. The city was beautifully crafted and has to be praised for its impressive and diverse areas. Despite it being an affluent city associated with fame, movies, and dreams, basking beneath the Vinewood Hill sign is also areas of hardship, violence, and poverty. The design of Los Santos makes it really fun to explore. Walking down the tourist-populated Vinewood area flush with expensive houses, homing the local celebrities, and the old cinemas on street corners is immersive, as is walking through some of the shadier corners and neighborhoods whilst being stared at by street gangs. The other side of the map features Blaine County, which is, well, the polar opposite. Here, the sandy landscape is populated by rednecks who often live in trailers and shacks living a more free and lawless life than their Los Santos neighbors. Both sides of the map are great and offer different appeals. As with any Rockstar game, what makes the world is the mysteries, humor, and randomness that occurs within it. <laughs> I always say that a good video game world is one which makes you want to manually travel to your destination opposed to fast traveling. And despite the odd taxi ride, I mostly did that. During your journey, you encounter some hilarious and disturbing random encounters, which will have you chuckling away hours later. 
Role-playing elements are obviously prevalent as well with activities across the world, such as drinking, golf, darts, and of course, frequenting strip clubs. <laughs> yeah, boy. Even now, after several full playthroughs, I still find myself finding new things in the world. It's a beauty. Nine, characters. So I've already touched upon the main characters in this game. Trevor, Michael, and Franklin are all very well thought out and offer extremely different characteristics. Take off your pants, cowboy, all right? Let's, let's fuck. For example, if you fancy playing a little bit of golf in your free time, you'd likely choose one certain character. But if you fancy committing some genocide on Vespucci Beach, you'll probably switch to another character. I'm sure you'll work out which one. Each character's arc is pretty impressive. All three have their demons, and they are prevalent and clear to see throughout the story. It's difficult to discuss antagonists because of the nature of GTA games. You meet a lot of bad guys. However, what I will say is that all the antagonists you meet pose different threats and seem to be fairly well constructed. Supporting characters provide some background to the story and, more often than not, humour. Trevor's pals are hilarious in every single encounter and fit their Canadian overlord perfectly, whereas Michael's family perfectly depict the dysfunction that is so common in many real homes. Kind of. Franklin has less supporting characters around him, which was a shame, but his friend Lamar possesses some of the funniest and most iconic dialogue in the game. Overall, the characters are good and I enjoyed my time playing with them, but you'll naturally have your favourites and I think most gamers are drawn to the same one. I did lack a slight emotional attachment to the characters though, perhaps that comes at the detriment of controlling all three. They're fun, but I'm not erecting an Arthur Morgan-esque shrine in my bedroom for any of them. Not, not that I have a shrine to, to Arthur Morgan, because well, because that would that would be weird. Eight, gameplay. Let's return to the original question: Should you buy this game today? Is the gameplay going to feel a bit stiff, given that developers have had over eight years to work on open-world gameplay mechanics? Simply, no, it won't. Gameplay in GTA has always been pretty standout and this game continues on that front. Sure, there's better games out there for gameplay as of today, but let's be honest, we'd all be disappointed if there wasn't. Combat, although I would say relatively easy unless you take off aim assist, is good and driving mechanics still feel fresh. You have the option to play in first or third person, which comes down to personal preference, and you can also enter a cinematic mode when driving. Pressing right on the D-pad will interact with passers-by, and it normally depends on which character you're controlling as to whether that passerby is met with a pleasantry or a pretty funny insult. Why, oh why, weren't you drowned at birth? I'm sure if the game were to be made today, we'd see a fully functioning greet and antagonize system like in Rockstar's Wild West Adventure. For a 2013 game, this gameplay still feels so fresh. It's not broken and it won't bore you. 9. Visuals If you're buying this game today, don't buy it for the visuals. Now I'm not saying that this game is not visually strong, but due to its 2013 release date, it doesn't stand out. But I'm also a gamer of the opinion that you should never buy a game on visuals alone. Yes, we all talk about the mastery of Horizon Zero Dawn, but take away the unique story and gameplay, and you've just got a low-budget student film shot on a pretty decent camera. This game absolutely still stands up. Playing on the PS4 stroke Xbox One versions will naturally enhance the visuals from the initial PS3 and 360 versions. The best way to look at these visuals would be to compare it to an equally successful game of the same era and that would be Skyrim, released two years prior. Yes, two years is a long time for video game development, but playing Skyrim now, the visuals feel a bit dated, and that's on the special edition. Not bad, but you can just feel the age. I'd say that if you didn't know, you'd still assume that GTA 5 is new, just perhaps produced with a slightly lesser budget. Plus, don't forget for PC gamers, some of the mods available 
combined with your high-powered custom system, which you so often like to tell us about, can make the game look incredible. Don't expect Red Dead Redemption 2, but also don't expect RuneScape. The visuals are fine. 7. Bugs Like most games, you do get the odd little funny AI error or cutscene wobble, but on the whole, I've very rarely encountered a bug in this game, certainly nothing that'll affect your progress or that you'll even remember the next day. For a game with such a big world, it's almost perfect. 9. Length This is probably a contentious category because GTA 5 can be played at your own speed and that can sometimes distort the actual length of it. From recent polls, the main story takes between 30 and 35 hours to complete, whereas the inclusion of side missions and extras would take you up to 50. There's also a lot of collectibles and other stuff to do. So if you're going for 100%, firstly, good luck within your quest, and secondly, you're going to be looking at around 80 to 90 hours. 35 hours for a story is a pretty good length, but I would say it feels quite quick. I'll be honest, before I checked polls and actually worked out how long it took me, I was thinking it was more around of the 20 mark, but that's credit to the fast-paced nature of the missions and also a lot happens in this story. Not as much as Red Dead Redemption 2, but the story covers some ground and it's impressive that it was crafted into just 35 hours while still remaining fresh. Because there's so much to do in the world, it can possibly burn quite quickly when you've finished the main story. Not all collectible quests are fun, so I'd suggest you do a mixture of main story, side mission, and other activities as you go. Even after multiple plays, this game still doesn't bore me. 9. Fun Yes, this game is fun. GTA has that beautiful escapism feel to the game. Now, obviously, I don't know you. Yes, you watching this video. But I'm going to assume that you're not a mass murdering criminal, aside from BTK, who is obviously a loyal subscriber to my channel. So playing GTA allows you to do things that you can't normally do, which I guess is every single video game really, but GTA so much more so. Aside from the good gameplay and the captivating story, the list of side quests and role playing activities will keep you hooked. Sometimes, after a long day at work, I like to come home, switch on GTA, and just, you know, hire a prostitute to unwind, ignoring my, my real-life girlfriend in the process, which says more about the game than me, right? 10. Replayability Would you play this game again? Yes, you would. As it's a big game, you'll naturally take a bit of a break from the single-player mode, but you would definitely stop by again. I bought the game on Xbox 360 on release day in 2013 and I later bought it again on PS4 and have probably played the game to completion around four times. Plus, with the before mentioned impressive online world, this will likely be one of those games you never uninstall, just in case. 8. Value As I speak, the game can be picked up for £15 stroke $22 which you may initially think, hmm, for a game released in 2013? And yeah, perhaps it is a bit steep, but where this differs from other successful games from that time which are still pricey, is that this game is still full of new content. The online servers are updated weekly with new offers, missions and expansions, and not many other games from 2013 offer that. It's also looking extremely unlikely that we're anywhere near a GTA 6. Sure, we'll get one eventually, but at the moment, Rockstar is still making so much money from GTA 5, they're running with that at the moment, and likely working on other titles, which isn't necessarily a good thing as they seem to be completely neglecting the online of Red Dead Redemption 2 in favor of GTA, which as a lover of that series as well, is a shame. However, that does mean the servers of this game will likely continue to be busy for many years to come. 7. And there you have it, our scores for picking up this game today. Naturally, if I reviewed this game back in 2013, it would have scored higher, but back then I had a social life 
and, and I didn't spend all my time making videos on, on, on YouTube. For more videos, just like this one, please hit subscribe.